Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today we're talking all things polygons. So we're gonna go through all the different types of polygons, whether or not a polygon is concave or convex, how to find the perimeter of a polygon, and a few other things. So let's take a look. So first of all, we need to know that there is different types of polygons. And before we even go through the different types, we're gonna talk about the definition. A polygon is a closed figure so it means you don't have any openings, okay? All the segments are connected to each other. It's a closed figure. Think about like a gate or a fence. You, there's no opening. Everything is closed in of line segments. Um, there's no curves. A polygon has no curves. So a circle is not a polygon. A crescent shape is not a polygon. A semicircle is not a polygon. Um, it is a closed figure of just line segments and there's no opening, no curves. So when we then talk about the different types of polygons, Polygons are always named by how many sides they have. So I'm going to go through this chart with you. And you're going to know these, but we just need to make sure that we are very specific. So um, a polygon, the smallest amount of sides a polygon can have is three. You can't have a polygon of one side. That's a line or a line segment. Two sides, they're not going to have any op with opening within it. Three sides would be the smallest. So a three-sided figure we know is a triangle. A four-sided figure we should know is a quadrilateral. We don't want to say rectangle or square because then that's a specific type of quadrilateral. We want to make sure we say a four-sided figure is a quadrilateral. Five is a pentagon. Six is a hexagon. Seven is a heptagon. I've also seen online people calling it a septagon. Uh, means the same exact thing. Octagon is for eight. Nine is nonagon. Ten is decagon. 12 is dodecagon. Now I skipped over 11. We usually don't talk too much about an 11-sided figure, but it's an, um, a hendecagon, um, but that's good to know. And then honestly, after 12, we don't really call many of the polygons by a specific name. We just put the number of sides that it has dash gone. So, you know, if there's a 32-sided figure, it would just be called a 32 gone. Okay, so now the next thing to know. Okay, so the next thing we need to talk about is concave or convex. Now, concave is going to mean that if I take my polygon and I'm able to connect two vertices of my polygon and have it be on the outside of the figure, like this dotted line here, that would be concave. Concave means that part of the points, the segments that make the polygon, are kind of dipped into the figure. And that's what's happening here. We have this like dip in figure, which means I can connect on the outside. Where in this figure here, this would be convex. Because no matter what two points you pick on this polygon, if you were to connect them, they're either going to be on the edge of the polygon or within the polygon. But the moment you can connect two points and that's on the outside, it would be concave. Okay, so concave, again, is two vertices can connect on the outside of the figure. So what I want to show you here are these would be four examples of polygons that are definitely concave because you can see that you can clearly connect on the outside of them. Whereas over here on the right, these are going to be polygons that are clearly convex. So you can really see like a big difference um, in that all four of these figures have sides that are dipping into the figure where all of these convex uh, figures are all kind of pushed out. Like the fence is pushed out. There's no pushed in area. So again, concave, you have that dip within. Convex, everything is pushed out. And you can only connect within the polygon. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to take a look, about, look at is finding the perimeter. Finding the perimeter, we should know since early elementary school, perimeter just simply means we add up all the outside edges. So I don't think that's going to ever be a big problem because, again, perimeter, we know, is just adding things up. Sorry, I'm clicking through. Okay, so if I gave you this polygon here and I said find the perimeter of a polygon, we would need to know the measures of all of our sides on this coordinate plane. I'm going to just zoom out real quick so we can see the whole figure. So here if I said find the perimeter of A, B, C, D. Well, it's pretty clear that AB is four units long. One, two, three, four. And it's also pretty clear that CD, one, two, three, four, is also four units long. But in this polygon, this quadrilateral that happens to be on the coordinate plane, I've got a couple diagonal lengths. So AD and BC. 
Now, we've already done the distance formula, so technically I could find the distance from B to C by plugging in the ordered pairs of 3, 3 and 1, negative 3 into my distance formula to find that length. Whatever that length is is going to be identical to this length. Um, or I can use my Pythagorean theorem. So I could actually create, and you see I made this in orange here, a right triangle where BC is the hypotenuse. So if I wanted to calculate BC, BC squared, so think about it, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This BC squared would be equal to 2 squared plus 6 squared. Now, if you were to plug in those coordinate points into the distance formula, you're basically going to do the same thing here because the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem are truly the same formula. So then if I went ahead and I did my steps, 2 squared is 4. So again, 2 squared is 4. 6 squared here is 36. I get BC squared is equal to 40. Take the square root on both sides, and radical 40 becomes 2 radical 10. Now, if BC is 2 radical 10, then AD is 2 radical 10 because they're identical figures. And so then my perimeter, if I added them up, would be 4 plus 4 is 8. And then 2 radical 10 plus 2 radical 10 would give me 4 radical 10. So it's 8 plus 4 radical 10 units long. The last piece of this is understanding whether or not a polygon is regular or irregular. So a regular polygon means that all of the sides and all of the angles are congruent to each other. So in a triangle, it would be an equilateral triangle. So all the sides are equal measure and all the angles are identical. Whereas irregular means that the moment all the angles aren't the same and the moment all the sides aren't the same, it's considered irregular. It's not a regular polygon. So here, if I talked about a regular polygon, the polygon is convex, so everything is pushed out. Um, all the sides are congruent and all the angles are congruent. So these would be examples of regular polygons. This is a regular pentagon. This would be a regular quadrilateral, which happens to be a square, a regular hexagon, and a regular triangle, which happens to be an equilateral triangle. Irregular could look like any of these figures. So this is a pentagon, so is this, but this is a regular pentagon. This is an irregular pentagon. You see that only one pair of sides is marked as congruent, and these angles definitely do not match up. This regular quadrilateral is a square, but this regular quadrilateral is just a parallelogram. I've got opposite sides um, congruent, opposite angles congruent, but they're not all congruent to each other. This is a regular hexagon, six-sided figure, this is also a hexagon, but this is an irregular hexagon. Um, not all the sides are congruent, and you've got these all right angles, but then notice that this sixth angle is definitely not a right angle within the figure. That equilateral triangle compared to an irregular triangle. Um, this obviously has one, only one pair of sides congruent. It's an isosceles triangle, but it's definitely not regular. So now what I have here is I have... Um, points that you might want to plot. So if you want to hold off um, or press pause, plot these points, okay, on a piece of graph paper or on a sheet, a loose leaf paper. And then we're going to answer these questions. What kind of shape is it? Is it concave or convex, regular, or irregular? What's the perimeter and what's the area? So I'm going to go ahead and show you that this is what this figure looks like. Okay, it is a um, triangle. It is definitely convex. It's pushed out. Is it regular? I mean, looking at these uh, notations here, and you can see I counted this was six units long. This was eight units long. Pythagorean theorem is going to tell me that the diagonal here is 10. Um, it's definitely irregular because all the side lengths are not congruent to each other. Perimeter, once I use the Pythagorean theorem to actually get that this diagonal here is 10 or use my distance formula to find out that it's 10, Perimeter means I simply add up all of my side lengths, and I would get 24 units squared. Area formula for a triangle, we should remember, is 1 half base times height. So 1 half times the base of 8 times the height of 6. And just by coincidence, guys, I end up getting the same answer. It's 24, but in this case for area, it's 24 units squared. Okay, we're going to look at the same thing here. So if I took these four sets of points and I plotted them, I can easily count the length. So the length across is 5, the length down is 9. Uh, this shape, I'm going to call it a quadrilateral. I don't want to be more specific and call it a rectangle. I'm just simply 
naming it by its number of signs. It's definitely convex. It's pushed out. There's no part of the figure that's pushed in. It's also irregular. It's irregular because even though there's all right angles, the sides are not all congruent to each other. Perimeter note means we know that we just add up all of our signs. So we get 28 units. And then area we should know for a rectangle is simply length times width. And 5 times 9 is 45. So it's 45 units squared. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Bye.